as you know, um, if a vascular structure is injected, you have the risk of vascular occlusion or even blindness. So identifying where the vessels are and their depth is very important to prevent these complications. And so what, what I do prior to injecting patients is identify the main vascular structures in the area where I'm injecting and see what depth they are so when I'm injecting I can be either below or above the vascular structures that are critical in that area. So let's first start out in the temporal area where the superficial temporal artery is. And I've already put some gel on. And let's take a look and we use um, colored Doppler for this. So here's a good view of the superficial temporal artery. And this will be superficial to the temporalis muscle in the superficial temporal fascia. And so let's freeze it and let's measure the superficial temporal artery. See, it's a pretty substantial vessel. Now let's uh, measure it from the skin surface. And it's actually very superficial in her case. It's going to measure about 1.8 millimeters deep, and let's take a picture of that. So right down here, that's the temporalis muscle, and then you see the uh, superficial layer, the deep temporal fascia here, and then this is in the superficial temporal fascia. So that's the superficial temporal artery, very important vessel um, when you're injecting the temple to know where that is to prevent some blindness. Now let's go to the angular artery, which is in the nasolabial fold. This is one of the more common vessels that is injected uh, and causes vascular occlusion. So here's a cross section of the angular artery, which is a continuation of the facial artery after it gives a branch of the superior labial artery. And so this is the angular artery, and let's measure how deep it is in this area. So in this area, it measures about 3.125 millimeters deep, so that's pretty superficial. But you see that there's a, a plane below and a plane above for your injection, so you have to decide which, you just don't want to be in the middle where that vessel is. All right. So now let's go a little bit uh, inferior and look at the superior labial artery. Look at the superior labial artery is usually deep to the orbicularis oris muscle, as you can see in this uh, visualization right here. And so you want to put your injection superficial to the orbicularis oris muscle. So here's the um, artery. Let's get a good visualization of that. So there you go. That's the superior labial artery. And then just superficial to that, the hyperechoic area, hypoechoic area, is the orbicular sorus muscle. So now let's get um, a distance on that. And in this patient, it's 4.7 millimeters deep. All right, so now let's look at the inferior labial artery. And this is a little more tortuous, and it could be above and below or within the orbicularis oris muscle. And sometimes it's actually both, both within, above, and below that muscle. So what you're seeing is the hyperechoic area, so those are her teeth. And then above it, you see the... Um, the vessel, I want to get a, a better visualization of that. So here we go. So this is the inferior labial artery, and just superficial to that would be the orbicularis oris muscle. And now I'm going to take a pic distance of that, and that distance is. 3.29, and what we do when we do these measurements, we put them in the patient's chart, so every time we don't have to go and measure it again. And so we know that um, she's 3.29, she's always going to be 3.2 um, in subsequent exams, and we take a picture of that. So now let's look at the facial artery. This is the main artery of the face. It's going to be a very hefty structure. 
So now the facial artery is going to come over the mandible at the antagonial notch. The antagonial notch is caused by pulsations on the mandible over time. It causes a gentle erosion of the mandible. And so you can always feel it right there. You can feel the vessels right there. And now right here we have the facial artery. So now let's look at the distance uh, depth of this uh, facial artery. So it's a substantial artery and it measures about three millimeters deep at that point, but let's actually measure how big the artery is in diameter. It's going to measure uh, almost two millimeters in um, diameter, so it's a pretty hefty vessel. And so we'll uh, take a picture of that and save it for later. As you've just seen, I've identified the location as well as the depth of several vessels in this patient's face. The next step is for me to inject, and I'll inject either with needles or cannulas, but I'll keep in mind at what depth I want to be to create a very safe environment for the patient. It gives the patient a, a little assurance that I've gone the extra step and that she's going to get a safer uh, injection. Uh, but it also gives the patients a little assurance that if, God forbid, something were to go wrong, I could identify it and take care of it very quickly and easily using ultrasound. I don't have to panic. I've got all the tools right here.